hello good afternoon everyone you're welcome to my page and um, I am continuing the question and answer time so here is me you know addressing questions sent to me by different people there are some people I don't even I don't even know them whether they are male or female they send me questions and then I address it by bleakly on this page so today i want to address question number one like i told you yesterday question number one is in seven good food and it's on marriage and money <laughs> you know <laughs> money issue is always a very technical discussion so today i'm going to give my opinion on all these seven questions that was asked by one single person okay and I am sure that this will help so many, 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 many people. So if you are online, please say hello to me so that I can know that you are listening. Okay? So I will read out the questions and I will address them one by one. So someone sent me a message yesterday and a very long message. So I had to draft out the question in the bulk message. So this is the question I drafted out myself from all the discussion number one how do you undo money when only one partner is working number two how do you undo money when both partners are working number three what is the uh, is joint account compulsory number four what is the best approach to practically undo finance individually and as couples number five how can bills and responsibilities be shared so no one feels cheated number six must husband know and approve all expenses wife makes where do we draw the line be before it becomes financial abuse and number seven how do we draw the line between accountability and control so those are the seven questions i'm going to take them one by one but before i answer the questions one by one i want you to know that marriage is a covenant okay marriage is instituted by god and that two two people different people come together to become one a man and a woman comes together to become one flesh okay that is the biblical uh, basic of marriage okay so if two people are coming together to become one everything about them is done in a joint way because the bible says what get therefore god has joined together let no man put asunder if god is saying no man should put asunder should money put you asunder no the answer is no so knowing that basics of marriage is a covenant instituted by god it's uh, two people become one flesh and also that what god has joined together let no man put asunder so understanding that basics we want to answer each of those questions how do you handle money when one partner is not is just working one partner is working the other one is not working my question to you how there is why are you not working because god created us to work so personally i believe that nobody should be without working no adult okay so for me i will say the second partner should get to work both the wife and the husband should do something should be doing something because the bible says he or she that does not work should not eat so that second partner that is not working should start working that's the first thing i would say number two whether one person is still earning money now or the two of you are earning money as couples that goes to the second question how do you handle money when both are working you must handle money in a joint way I'm not talking about joint account. See, I want you to understand something. There is a difference between a, a, a managing joint account and spending jointly. You could even have a joint account and not spending, spending jointly or addressing a, a, a matters that, that needs money jointly. My main focus in this discussion is that couples should spend and you know use money jointly 
because two have become what one you are now one flesh you are no more saying it is my money it is now our money there's nothing like uh, this my husband's money is our money but my own money is my money no your money as a wife is our money your money as a husband is our money so whether one person is working of which one person should not be working every man is to work because the bible say the person that does not work should not eat when both of you are now working then you 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 use money jointly you plan money jointly it is not about joint account now but spending in unity you are united in purpose you are united in focus that when they wake the wife up if somebody should wake the wife up and say i want to give you 50 million or 100 million or 150 million what can you use it to do the thing that the wife will say okay that they will use the money to do should like have some correspondence with what the husband will say because you know what both of you are going for you know what you are both planning to do you know the investments that you are planning to make you know all the purchases that you are planning to make and that is where unity comes in let me tell you something a home where there is no unity it's it will always reflect in how you handle money if you are united in purpose you are united in focus i'm telling you you will spend in unity you will spend as one not as two entity the pro the reason why all these questions are coming up is that many married couples are still seeing themselves as you know apart you are not seeing yourself as one flesh when you see yourself as one flesh some of these questions will naturally fade off so how do you handle money you handle money jointly like you have unity of purpose unity of you know purchase and all that okay now many people think that it's only people that have joint accounts that are united financially no there are people they have joint account but they are so eh, opposite in purpose in investment and all that whereas there are some people they run separate account they spend jointly for example I and my husband, we have a separate account, but we spend jointly. We, we, we plan for money jointly. We budget jointly. We own investment jointly. We own everything jointly. But we don't have a, an account where we put joint money. Does that mean that we are separated? No. Whereas there are some couple, they have joint account, but they are still not in agreement as relating to money account so on the issue of joint account i will say it is not about joint account but it's about your mindset it's about spending jointly it's about planning jointly is by unity of purpose is by unity of focus for example you want to invest in something how 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 united are you the husband thinks Buying a property, a real estate property, is the best thing. Why the wife thinks uh, uh, setting up a, a, a multi-million store is the best thing for them. You know, you are not united. You are not communicating. You are not united. Even though you have joint account, you are still like, like you know, spending individually. It is not about joint accounts, but it is about spending joint. I don't know why couples don't trust themselves when it comes to money if you can trust someone with your life you can trust someone with your body you can trust someone with every other thing what is money it is the way we see money that is affecting many of us many of us we see money as the alpha and omega as our god little god the way we see money if you can entrust your life to someone and not feel and not feel like you are you are in a dangerous place with that person why can't you trust the other person i understand it is not everybody that handle money equally some people don't know how to manage money properly where and some other people don't know how to you know 
the right way to apportion money but what i'm trying to say is that when you communicate effectively as couples you will be able to balance up the one that spends too much will be able because you are accountable to one another so the one that is an uh, uh, overspender the one that always spends 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 spend, we have to be cautioned and controlled okay by the other person who is a saver and that way you can put what uh, 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 um, control you can be accountable to one another when there is love when there is unity there is oneness in your own money Managing money together, handling money together will not be an issue. If you can trust someone with your life, when there is absolute trust in your partner, okay, there will not be an issue. So, whether to have joint account or not is dependent on you, individual. But then, my focus is that you learn as couples to agree, okay, and to what be united when it comes to investment when it comes to uh, 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 purchases when it comes to how you save when it comes to how you uh, even help yes help people you have to agree you have to come to an agreement you have to come to a point where is the other your other partner does not even have to tell you about you already know like when when you know you know that yeah my partner is reasonable and won't empty the account to in the name of um give, uh, giving it for this charity and all that in such a way that will be in a serious financial mess you know that already when you are united when you have always been communicating you are open to one another you are accountable to one another i'm telling you it will get easier by the day it will get easier by the day in such a way that the flexibility now comes in okay now i move to the fourth question what is the best approach to practically and do finance individually and as couple the best way is that when any money comes into your hand you make sure that you assign the money to something a money that is not assigned to something that is just floating <laughs> can easily fly off okay and you won't even know when you for example as an individual when you receive your salary if you are still single you receive your salary sit down and plan how do i want to spend this money how do i want to apportion this money okay you you want to apportion some to your savings you want to put some percentage to uh, your investment you want to use some percentage for the running cost and all that you have to do that because and even as couples when you receive your money you make sure that you plan you plan how do you want to spend the money okay how which portion is going for our rent which portion is going for children care which portion is going for investment which portion is going for savings you plan that is how to undo best approach when you don't plan for money you don't approach your money that's when somebody will come tell you the whole story history uh, whether it's true or not and they say hey, you think you have money because you just receive your salary, maybe your salary is 250 uh, uh, naira. You think, oh, I have a lot of money. Someone comes, tell you the story, how cock and bull, they fought and his house was broken and blah, blah, blah. You know, you just say, oh, I, I have a lot of money. Take 10,000 and give it. Another person comes, oh, oh, this one, this one. You take uh, 15,000, you give. Why? You think you have money, but you don't have. Why? Because you you have not apportioned the money to something the money does not have um have a function you, you have not attached a rule to that money say okay for example if you sit down and, and apportion the money you say okay fifty thousand naira goes towards our rent our yearly rent okay uh, twenty thousand goes towards our children's school fees okay and thirty thousand goes to the saving then another 50,000 goes for the feeding of the family and then 10% uh, um, of 250,000 is what? 25,000, right? You, that is my, what? Tight. When you have already apportioned your money, your tight, your feeding, feeding and running costs, school fees, rent and all those things, you will discover that the 250,000 is gone. And if you, if you want to do, if you know, if you know you are you are you are p p someone that people come to ask for money please apportion a certain percentage for what 
to help the needy people. See, there was a time in my life where I discovered a lot of people come to me to ask me for money and it's really put me in serious financial strain. So I got to that point that I told myself that I will apportion a certain percentage, okay, for giving. Okay, let's say I give 10% of whatever money I make for giving. Okay, if somebody comes, I, I give you part of it. If another person comes, I give you the remaining. Once that 10% is gone, is finished, if any other person comes that month, I'm sorry, I don't have any money to give. Yes. Otherwise, I'm telling you, people will come and come and come and come and you will be in serious financial crisis. So that is how you can help yourself as family. If you know your family members are always disturbing you or your husband, your, your people are always disturbing you, a portion is certain percentage for charity, for giveaway. Once that percentage is gone, is exhausted in that month, you don't have any other money to give out. If husband and wife should follow that principle, I'm telling you there will not be an issue where the husband will empty their account for his younger brother or younger sister and the family will be in serious financial mess. Or there will not be a situation where the uh, woman will empty the bank account for her own family member. When you already agree that this is the percentage, if, especially you have to come to that agreement when you know that one of you is always reading the family of the finance. And putting you in financial mess you just have to go to that uh, use that approach where you come you 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 sit down and agree on how much percentage you want to apportion for feeding for rent for children's school fees for giving in a month some of you your rent will be due after one year you are you are shocked you are going about begging i'm telling you that is not an emergency because you know that you are going to pay rent if you have been apportioning certain percentage of your money for rent every month and you have been keeping it before the 12th month the rent will be complete but what you see many people is at the 12th month that they are that they are thinking about the rent they now begin to beg up and down no that is not a good approach every month when your salary comes in both of you you sit down and agree on what and what and what each money is going for and that way you'll be in a in a better uh, state you will be in a in a in a you know nothing comes to you by chance nothing comes to you as emergency you see people their wife wants to deliver after nine months they are running elta skater you have good nine months to prepare for that child if you plan better if you approach money better and you were collecting salary for those nine months but you never thought it wise to apportion certain percentage of money monthly we have to be disciplined when it comes to money okay so the approach is plan every money apportion every money to something and be what responsible be responsible don't just buy things on impulse don't just uh, you know spend on impulse don't just give out money on impulse think does it match our plan and how can we adjust it yes you can make it flexible but be careful that you spend responsibly okay now to the number uh fifth how can bills and responsibility be shared so on so no one feels cheated see this question is because you still see uh, this one's money as his money and that one's money as a, like i said earlier no any money that gets into the wife's hand is our money any money that gets into the husband's hand is our money so money should be spent jointly as couples that is it i don't know i don't know why we think god will say two becomes one flesh and then in money money will now begin to separate you no money should not separate you you are supposed to spend jointly that is how to be responsible and pay your bills without anybody feeling cheated your your money as a woman is the money of the family our money the money of the man most of the time is the women that say his money is our money but my money is my money no it's a wrong mentality it's not christianly and it is not it's unbecoming of a godly wife okay you must spend in unity the money is our money okay so that is how to be responsible also it is not like i said it is not about the joint account 
but it's about you agreeing in the spending, in the saving, in the investment. It is not about, let's open joint account, but it's about jointly agreeing in spending, in investing, in saving. Joint, eh, you know, use of money. You could have joint account and still be, you know, handling money separately, okay? When you trust one another, you would not have an issue. And also, please, let's have that mentality of thinking, what can I give? Not what can I collect? Not what can I receive? Let's have that mentality. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. The wife should be thinking, how can I give more to my, uh, to my husband? Your husband should be thinking, how can I give more to my wife? Not that how you will siphon and take all your money. No, that is not how Christians should do. That is not how people that are married, that, that too have become one flesh, should be behaving. Both of you should be thinking, what can I do better for my husband? How can I, you know, do better for my family? Not how you can cheat the other person or siphon or hijack things, okay? That is unbecoming. Now, to the sixth question. Must husband know and approve all expenses wife makes? The truth is that when you already plan your money, it creates flexibility. You already plan, this is the amount that we are spending on feeding. Your husband, you, you don't need the approval of your husband to start, uh, okay, should I buy a tomato? Should I buy onions? We won't the man be tired. I don't know why some men do like that, honestly. Okay, your wife wants to buy a tomato. He has to pick, call, phone, and call you. When you trust her, you trust that she will buy exactly what you want in the home. Are you not going to eat it? Also, women, be accountable also and be responsible. When your husband knows that you are going to spend responsibly, he wouldn't be monitoring you about. Husband, be responsible. When your wife knows you are responsible and you spend responsibly and you have the best interest of the family at that, she won't be monitoring you up and down. She won't want you to be calling or be monitoring their account. You know? Let us act responsibly like an adult. Let us, you know, love. Let us trust one another that we have the best interest of the family as heart. When you have shown over time that you have the best interest of your spouse at heart and your family at heart, I'm telling you, the other person will be relaxed. For example, most of the time, our ATM is always with me and my husband doesn't question question what I buy because he knows when 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 I buy this thing we need it is a need it's not buying on impulse I think before I buy I plan we plan family food you the wife the wife the wife knows what you need in, in in the kitchen even more most of the time the wife knows more what you need to eat than the husband so why will you not be saying oh you didn't tell me before buying tomato or oh, oh. No, <laughs> I mean, she has to call you before buying pepper, before buying meat. No, I mean, when you have budgeted, this is the amount you are spending on feeding for the month. Trust your wife enough to be able to spend the money wisely. Okay, if she says the money is not enough, can you justify, can you both like make a list and see what you eat and see Okay, if truly, because we know prices are changing day in, day out. But please, let us not deal with our spouses like any other person, like a stranger. Let us deal with love. Let us deal with care. Let us deal with trust. That way, you know, you will not be like a monitoring agent. You know, the home cannot be happy. The home cannot be enjoyable. When someone, you know, when you are just monitoring questioning everything, doing this and doing that. How do you want to experience joy and peace that is meant to be in a godly home? So, apportion every money that comes in, but give flexibility. What am I trying to say? When you apportion 50,000 Naira for feeding, okay, in a month, and you decide who wants to be buying the groceries. For me, most times, Myself and my husband, we go shopping, but so a good number of times it goes shopping too. So when we have already agreed this, the amount we are spending on feeding, give the other person flexibility, whoever is shopping, the flexibility to spend it. That is how everyone can be relaxed. Not that you are just, you know, 
about, okay, I have to know if you want to buy pants. Uh -uh. No, give your spouse that flexibility. Now, the last question, how do we draw the line between accountability and control? Everyone should be accountable. Marriage is about accountability. No one should be irresponsible in that marriage. Everybody should be accountable enough. You should be able to say, okay, this is what I'm doing and this is the reason why I'm doing it. Control. You put control when one partner is going outside your agreement. Okay? Maybe one partner is always, you know, uh, dragging you into serious financial mess, borrowing and borrowing, just giving out money anyhow without thinking or without planning. You have to put some control, okay, on that partner. That particular person that is always dragging you financially down in the home. It may be the wife, it may be the husband. You have to sit down and communicate. Everyone should be accountable. Accountability is one of the things that breeds huge, deep trust and needs couple together. When you are accountable to one another, it's not only in money. When you, go, when you are going out, you tell your wife, my wife, I'm going to this place and I will come back so, so, so time. And when your wife find, uh, uh, um, calls you, he finds out that you are in that particular place. When you are accountable to one another, the trust will grow deeper between you and your spouse. Please, let us not see accountability as something negative. Let us not see control where one is going outside boundaries or outside agreement. Let us not see it as something negative or something bad. But it is something that we make the family to progress and progress. Let me tell you something. If any, let me tell you one thing that has made my family to blossom financially. It is because we agree. Okay, we apportion money as they come in. We what we spend jointly, we invest jointly, and we what save jointly, and that is why we are progressing financially. You know, if you want to progress as couples, you just have to be united. If you want to progress financially, you have to be united and you have to deal with money in a loving way. Okay, a loving if, if you want to be loving, you have to be generous also to your spouse to your husband, to your wife, you know, not saying uh, your money is our money, but my money is my money. No, everyone should be out there to, 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 to thinking of how should I better my wife? How should I better my husband? How should I give more? How should I give more? Not how do I receive more? Let us stop that mentality of, you know, being always being the receiver. Also, ask yourself, what can I give? Trust is very, very important when it comes to, you know, money matter in marriage. Please, let us trust one another. Let us deal in love. Let us know that whatsoever God has joined together, let not money put asunder. I hope I've been able to answer this question. If you have more things to add to this, you can put it in the comments. If you, if you find it useful, please let me know. And also, if you know people that are struggling in this aspect, please do well to share. You are free to always share anything that is on this page. Please share it so other people can benefit. I pray that God is going to continue to help homes to handle money better and better in such a way that you are going to be prosperous in the name of Jesus. So thank you very much. I'm going to come live again to answer the two questions that are left. The question number four and question number five. Okay, so here is me buying out after answering question number one. <laughs> this question number one is so filled up. So I hope you gained one or two things. See you and have a nice time. This is Matters of the Heart by Okweyemi Alabi. Please do well to invite your friends to follow this page. And God bless you. Bye-bye.